welcome to this series of Infectious Diseases Talk. I am Ed Ong. I am a consultant physician in general internal medicine with an interest in infectious diseases. What is the main principle of control and transmission in the clinical context, in the hospital setting, in the healthcare setting? The one that is most important is hand hygiene. And if you look at that, the hand hygiene forms a major part, okay, in addition to cough etiquette. When you cough, what should you do? Okay, you don't cough it openly so that you can spray your respiratory droplets to other people around you. So the other aspects of control transmission is actually the use of personal protective equipment, which on the slide here shows is PPE. What are those? Those are like, for example, your surgical mask, the mask that you wear is actually part of your personal protective equipment. So in an uh, environmental setting where you care for such individuals, where you can be exposed to such pathogens, you wear a gown. Okay? In addition, that you may wear a plastic apron over your gown, which is water repellent in case it's a bodily fluid that actually gets spilled on you. Sharp disposal, very important. After one use a needle for any procedures that should be disposed safely, okay, in a sterile bin, a handling of the environment, particularly if the infection is airborne, the patient that has been nursed in a control environment where there is what we will regard as negative airflow ventilation where air is being sucked off okay, in the context so that it doesn't actually get shifted from one part of the room to another and equipment sterilization. If you have done a medical procedure using some of the equipment, those equipment needs to be sterilized. Vector eradication. If an infection is caused by a vector, and one that is actually very well documented and here very relevant, in Malaysia is like dengue, okay? The Aedes aegypti mosquito is one of the vector that transmit dengue. Space and ventilation, which I've highlighted too as well. And you may remember, okay, during the COVID-19 pandemic that we have, we have to have a physical distance, okay, in the context of a meter between one individual to another. So that's what it's all about in terms of control, transmission, to mitigate okay, the aspects. So what can we do as a human host in the context that now I talk about pathogen being transmitted to human, but what can we do in terms of the human host as far as protection? Yes, if there is a vaccine that one can use to protect the human host for a pathogen that can be easily transmitted, we immunize. If there is good evidence that an antibiotics can show a prevention in that context, yes, we call it prophylactic antibiotics, that you take the antibiotics to prevent it from actually transmitting to the minimum host. The nutritional status of the patient is also very important. The malnourish, and there's been good evidence of such work that has been done, particularly in poor developing countries, where malnutrition is an issue. Those individuals, unfortunately, particularly children, are more predisposed to infection. And isolation, yes, very, very important. Okay, you obviously uh, are aware, and medical students are told, if you are unwell, with a fever and a cough, do not come into the campus, okay? Because you could be a potential source of transmitting whatever that you may have got, okay, infection-wise. And I talk about PPE. And obviously, in a hospital setting, you want to avoid giving immunosuppressive medication to this individual so that they don't get immunosuppressed further. So in practice, we call this a two-tier system of infection control. So tier one, convenient measures applied to all patients that will prevent all transmission as much as we can, okay, in that hospital setting. Transmission best precaution, yeah, that's when we start to understand how does that transmission happen, then we actually focus on the stringent measures applied to actually prevent spread of specific proven and specific infection. So I hope I have given you an overview of what the principles of infection control is all about, okay, in the context of applying it in this clinical setting and also for the general public, for you to be able to understand 
you really play quite a big key role in that context of mitigating the risk of transmission. So I hope this has been useful and I look forward to seeing you all at University of Newcastle, either here in Johor, Malaysia or in the United Kingdom. Thank you.